guys, welcome back to the Friday Vlog where we discuss activity that goes on here with the Buzzweaver channel. That includes things like current events, headlines that are in the news, social media, pop culture, technology, and items of interest that come up during the week that allow us to have a little bit of a dialogue. If this is your first time here to the channel, welcome. And for those of you who are returning visitors and subscribers and or followers on Alt Tech, thank you guys for your continued support. So starting it off, guys, with probably the most reported and covered story this week, particularly in the mainstream media, even going up to the president, all over Georgia and, of course, social media, where I had back and forth with people from Colorado and just people in general concerning uh, the voter ID law or voter laws here in Georgia. And as you can see here from the Daily Caller, I like the Daily Caller because they gave a very thorough very well written and outlined report on this despite the fact that many of the people that i shared this with criticized me for using a conservative source but again as i said it has to do with the content and not actually the source so mlb all-star game reportedly moved to colorado a state with voter id laws similar to georgia so the article goes into the kind of point by point similarities between Georgia and Colorado. Now, I talked about this ad nauseum with many of the people in these discussions, so I won't go into all the particular details. I will leave a link to this article below the video if you guys want to see kind of what the point-by-point -point, uh, ideas or the point-by-point -point, uh, similarities are. But most of it, to simplify it, really comes down to IDs and the use of IDs. And of course, in the United States, you have to have ID for some of the most innocuous things, even going to a movie theater to prove your age if you look younger. And even to get all-star tickets, you have to have ID. And to fly on planes, you have to have ID. And of course, all you guys know, purchasing alcohol, getting loans, renting cars, getting a hotel room. So many things are re require an ID. And uh, not to be outdone, Delta Airlines tried to involve itself into this discussion as well. So Delta nearly loses tax benefit in Georgia over elections law retribution. It didn't take long for Delta Airlines to feel the heat again. The airline almost lost a 35 million jet fuel tax benefit after Republicans in the Georgia General Assembly sought to punish the Atlanta-based company for speaking out against the state's controversial new elections law. So here they want to complain to me about a uh, conservative page post versus a not so conservative because you can always tell who writes it by their language punish as you know we always talk about how this is a tool of the left punish is what they do to people who they don't agree with and then you have controversial so these two words are very synonymous and give you a clear detail as to who often writes these particular articles. But Delta Airlines, the basically it was the president of Delta Airlines, was uh, kind of rabble-rousing about the voter laws. And uh, so the GOP said, okay, well, then we'll, uh, we'll just have to rescind the tax break that we were going to give you guys. So who's going to be affected by this, ironically enough? Because part of the other discussion is the fact that here in Atlanta, there is about a 51% the 51% of the residents within the Atlanta metro area are of make up the black community. So 51% and Colorado is around 10%. And I saw someone give me like an exact figure of like 9.2% or something. Just someone just trying to just throw out some additional numbers. Of course, I was rounding off, but it's interesting how they try to make this out to be a, have a racial component to it, even to suggest apparently that, uh, Black Americans aren't able to go and get IDs. Apparently, they're unable or incapable of being able to, to vote as well. I mean, is that what you're trying to say? Very similar to a quote that I wrote down here, and I wanted to uh, show it to you guys so that I made sure that I got it correct. No one is bringing into question the fact that those opposed to the voting bill are advocating for less secure voting, less integrity, and less verification. It sounds like these people want to ensure they can game the system again. Now, of course, I wrote this very specifically to make a point and, of course, to be somewhat hyperbolic my own self. So if you are for an insecure election, then you're obviously wanting it to be gamed potentially again. Now, if you guys have followed the channel, you know that we went over the Molly Ball article in Time magazine where she specifically outlines in 6,683 words 
how the election was fortified for a desired outcome. So a lot of these changes took place because of the pandemic. So in the bill or in it, so what some of the Democrats wanted to keep were some of the provisions that were given or the concessions that were given out because of the pandemic, which was like extra uh, drop boxes and just additional concessions that were made because of the pandemic. So of course, whenever you have more of a liberal voting system or liberal anything, of course, they want to continue maintaining that because it clearly gives them more of an advantage. So Cobb County pushes to keep the all-star game at Truist Park. I'm not really sure why they ended up making this park in Cobb County because Turner Field wasn't all that old. They opened up Turner Field in the early 2000s and having gone to Turner Field, it, was, it still looked brand new to me. So Cobb pushes to keep the all-star game at Truist Park. If the game is moved out of Georgia, it could pile on more lost revenue for the state from major sporting events that were canceled in 2020. And they did lose quite a bit. So if you can see here, um, they canceled, of course, uh, the NCAA Men's Final Four or March Madness, as I like to call it, some of the best basketball. Also, the Chick-fil-A kickoff game was also, this, hap this happens at the same time as Dragon Con, the sci-fi convention. So... At the Sci-Fi Convention or Dragon Con, if you guys haven't seen that video, those videos of me covering the convention, you can find them on my main page. Just go down towards the bottom of the page and you'll see my coverage of Dragon Con there if you guys want to check that out. But Dragon Con takes place the same time as the opening uh, day of college football. So with Dragon Con, there can be anywhere from 70 to 90,000 people in downtown Atlanta. And then with the start of the football college football games, it can bring an additional 30 to 60,000 more people to Atlanta. So Atlanta is very familiar with large amounts of people being here. And as you can see here, you can see uh, the revenue loss ranges from 39 million to 191.5, which is very specific, like the guy that was trying to tell me about the ratio of Colorado uh, residents or black residents of Colorado. That individual was uh, claimed to be a black gentleman from Colorado. So I'm just going to take him at his word. So suffice to say, 51% of the black community uh, here in Atlanta, Georgia, is going to look, or is you know was the topic, and then now moving to a 10% uh, black community in Colorado. If that's of any significance to anybody, but just a part of contention nonetheless. So I guess all the heat is now coming down on Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms, and this is one of my biggest arguments, as I just mentioned earlier when I showed you guys the map. Um, this is, uh, I've been doing this several takes, so, uh, we can go over it again in case I didn't cover the map or at least in this particular take. So now the, keep in mind here that the colors do not represent uh, anything political. It has to do with, uh, more tourism, but as you can see, here's Metro Atlanta in pink and, uh, Fulton County is the largest county. It starts up here. It goes through the center of Atlanta, goes through downtown Atlanta, all the way into South Metro. Fulton County has the most problems when it comes to voting. And as you can see here is Cobb County right next to it, which was also blue. So many of them, not all, but many of the northern parts of the county were very blue in, in voting, which is not surprising to me, particularly Fulton County as well, or Midtown Atlanta as well, in the Midtown area here. But uh, yeah, so this is the map of Georgia. It has 159 counties. And the ones that always seem to have the problem, or the fewest, is, uh, well, I should say the, the ones that have the most problems is Fulton County. I also heard there were some issues down here in Savannah as well. But Fulton County. And so now you have the mayor, Atlanta mayor, issues order to mitigate impact of uh, State Bill 202 officials say. So she's trying to get a little bit more involved, and she needs to. She needs to get a handle on the precincts down there because if the city can handle hundreds of thousands of people for conventions and activities that go on in Atlanta, they can come up with a better system. Now, of course, we have MARTA, which uh, which is buses and trains that go all throughout parts of metro Atlanta and certainly downtown Atlanta. So getting around Atlanta is not particularly difficult, and usually they try to make the drop boxes at accessible points along these particular routes or routes, however you want to pronounce it. So... There isn't any particular reason why people can't vote, but more particularly, more specifically, as I said, getting an ID is not a major issue, and that seems to be like a point of a contention, contention 
Like Joe Biden is saying that it, you know, it just is an extension of the Jim Crow laws, which is absolutely ridiculous. As you can see here, fact check what the new Georgia elections law actually does. I won't go into all the major specifics. I'll give you kind of kind of give you guys a highlight. Increases state power over counties, so it allows for a better and a more secure implementation of some of the laws and rules. Guaranteed, but also limited drop boxes. Now, keep in mind, there were additional boxes added, as I see here, due to special pandemic-related rules. And if you look at some of these related rules, not only in Georgia, but throughout the United States, there was a lot more boxes. A lot more boxes. I think someone mentioned that there was a there was 38. Here it says it went. Uh, uh, it would go from 38 drop boxes in November's election to eight in the future. So. As you can see here, it was a pretty considerable amount of drop boxes. 38 versus 8. It's pretty significant. But again, this was to make concessions for the pandemic. But as I said, anytime you make things more liberal, and I mean that both in the literal sense and the figurative sense, the Democrats want to jump all over it because it allows for our system to be essentially overwhelmed. And and that's what Democrats like. They like anything that promotes chaos and controversy and overwhelms any sort of a system so that there's complete chaos. Because the idea, as I understand it, not necessarily from the Time Magazine article, but attributing to the Time Magazine article, that it wasn't really even, a lot of the people that were engaged in this activity weren't even sure it was going to work. The whole premise of, of, the, of the action was to just overwhelm the system to create confusion and make it a legal matter so that it just drags out and just becomes a big sore spot and dark cloud over President Trump. So the whole fortifying the election for a desired outcome was really just about creating chaos. Another early voting day in primaries and general elections, like so when we can vote, say particularly on Sunday, which I thought was interesting here. It says, there was extensive media coverage of initial Republican proposals to eliminate a sharply reduced early voting, early voting on Sundays when some black churches participate in souls to the polls voting drives. Now, another thing that I want to mention here, too, is that Democrats often set up shuttle services that will go to local areas throughout Atlanta and pick up uh, Democrat, what they perceive to be Democrat voters, obviously, uh, to go take them to the polls as well. So I don't know why they don't offer those services year-round for doctor's appointments or dentist appointments or to get their groceries, but I can assure you they have rental uh, vehicles out there picking people up to vote. Then you have short and runoffs. Uh, the law significantly shrinks both the overall length and runoff campaigns and the early voting period for runoffs. Of course, we had the huge, gigantic runoff here in Georgia where we were getting as many as three canvassers a week coming to the house and not to mention like nine to 10 to 12 flyers per day in our mailboxes and big changes to absentee voting, of course, would require an ID. So under the law, absentee ballots are allowed to be sent out to voters 29 days before an election down from the previous 49 before an election. Voters are allowed to request an absentee ballot a maximum of 78 days before the election down from 180 days and the applications have to be received by elections officials no later than 11 days before the election a reduction from the previous effective deadline of four days before the election so as you can see here a lot of these very flexible concessions allowed for a lot more time so if the problem is time then why is ID a problem? There's plenty of time here, particularly if you're able to do things on the weekends as well. So again, really making a big deal out of very little. And again, it is to secure the elections. And you may have heard about the food and drink restrictions. In short, people can have access to snacks or water. When you go and vote inside the polls, they'll have uh, snacks and stuff in there. Sometimes they'll offer, even offer water. But the reason they don't want to do this is because they don't want there to be any sort of uh, individuals with, you know, any sort of clothing or, or, or hats or may even be uh, recommending or suggesting to people to vote as they hand out these items, as you can obviously understand. So this was one of the big reasons. But apparently the canvassing, which was a huge thing, too. How many canvassers were out there actually coaxing or um, encouraging people to vote in a particular way? So that wasn't necessarily addressed because you know you can go out there and you know i mean obviously you're walking on private property but again as long as you're in public space you can 
you can you know present whatever uh, political memorabilia or banners or flags or whatever you want to do. But when it comes to the lines, you can't have any sort of political material or content or uh, items on your person. You know, within 150 feet, 150 feet of the building, as it says here. Uh, so they got to follow that. And there's just some other provisions that were there. But yeah, so I thought it was kind of absurd. And I wanted to talk about this because, you know, as a Georgia resident, as a Georgia voter, I received my application and I didn't request one. They obviously, as you saw there, they just sent them out. My father actually received a ballot without or, or a absentee ballot without requesting one. So the system was gamed. Now, I'm not going to use some of the other terms that could get me in trouble here on YouTube, but obviously the system was manipulated. And apparently, Major League Baseball, the president, and uh, special interest groups all want to make a big issue about this in particular to kind of hang this. It is still early, though. I mean, we're still two years away from our, our next election, or at least major election for the Senate and the House. But it is interesting how this all kind of fell into place this week. All right, guys, so that's going to wrap it up for this Friday vlog. I want to thank all you guys for the likes, the shares, and the comments. Below this video, you will find links to the various social media sites that I belong to, as well as Alt Tech. So I'd ask you guys to avail yourselves of those links so that you can see additional content that I post throughout the week. And of course, here on YouTube, that would be the channel icon appearing right there on the screen to subscribe, along with notifications. That way you guys will know when there's content here on the channel, as well as the Friday vlogs. And I'll see you guys right there behind that camera next week.